Guys, we're gonna have 300 quarts tomorrow. Let's go. New side story, Delta 7 The Inheritor. New counter cases for Maria Antonov, Jake Walker, Carl Wong Da Bong, Sylvia Lina Cooper. All right, I think everyone has Sylvia, level 100 at this point. Everyone has Carl Wong, level 100 at this point. And nobody builds Jake Walker at this point, so nobody cares about him, it's fine. But Maria Antonov, the old grandma, any of you plan to level 100 her just because she has counter case? I think most of you will do it. But I think, yeah. So, Dominic King Regime. Probability up, okay. So we have new characters for both of them. Delta 7 is here. Collection. Collection, very good. New launch of 30th day celebration event. New Fusion Core Special Package. Limit 5 per account. I wonder what is this? Is this like a diamonds only? Yeah, pretty cool. Alright guys, so I think a lot of you guys want to know more about Dominic King. Alright, so this dude right here, he is actually not too bad. Alright, in my opinion, he's actually quite good. Alright, what makes him different from other defenders? He is a defender with 4 costs. Alright, that's a bit high for a defender. In most cases, most defenders have 3 costs. Alright, defenders like Ryan, defenders like Lee Yumi, right? But the thing that he has is he's quite a bulky stats. He has pretty good stats. 67,000 HP, 3.9k attack, which is not bad for a defender. Alright, and then 1.5k defense ETC. Uh, he's not an evasion build, so evasion is a bit low. Alright, let's talk about skill. So this one is just basic attack, nothing special here. So this particular skill, uh, basically it releases when his HP uh, reaches 70% and 40%, right? It will taunt nearby target, uh, basically increase its own damage, increase uh, damage reduction by 7.5% to 15%, depending on the number of targets hit, which is really crazy. So level 5 basically recover 10% uh, HP when 70% HP threshold is rich, and recover 20% HP when 40% HP threshold is rich. So he has self-heal in this passive skill, which is really interesting. Most other defenders don't have this self-heal ability. So in a way, he can heal himself back up for uh, to basically last longer in the battle. Alright, let's talk about this skill. This is basically... A 18 second skill, right? Slams the ground, reduce attack by 15%, and when you go high, uh, it just reduces the cooldown of the skill, which is quite crazy. Going to the ultimate skill, alright? So, release shockwave from his body, uh, increase own defense by 25% for 12 seconds. So, at skill level 5, apparently the duration will add 6 seconds, which is a 12 plus 6, uh, 18 seconds. So, let me show you guys how strong he is in battle. Alright, so let's see if we can bring some, some enemy units, some ground units. So we're gonna honor AI. So we're gonna place him right here. Alright, look at this. Boom. Pretty cool. I actually like this King Fury guy. But yeah, his cost is a bit high. If you already have Liumi, Awaken Heal Day, will he have a spot in your team? Probably not. But here's the thing. He is strong when he's buff. Alright, in KR, I see a lot of people using him. During his PvP buff week, he is definitely strong. I'm not sure if... I think he's a guy that might be safe for PvP because I don't think he will ever be banned. I don't think this guy will ever be meta. I could be wrong, but yeah, that's just what I feel. I feel like most players are going to go for Liu Mi and Ryan in terms of their defender choice. And this guy is going to be the guy that everyone overlooks. But if you want to have a backup PvP defender, right, just in case like your favorite tank, like for example Liu Mi is banned this week, right? She might be banned next week again, depending, right? So I feel like Someone like Dominic can basically take her spot at 4 cost, Liu Mi is just not worth it. So Dominic at 4 cost might as well be, be that substitute. Look at this skill. Boom. Man, his skill is so cool. His skill is really really cool. Okay, so in my opinion, for most players, if you are free to play, just skip him. Because if you have Liu Mi, uh, if you have someone like Ryan, and even Irie might be like a more budget friendly option. Alright, 4 cost for a defender. You might as well just uh, go for Awakened Heal Day at this point, right? Just add two more costs to go for Awakened Heal Day. But that's totally up to you, right? Alright, let's move on to Maria Antono. Alright, so this old lady apparently is a tower type. So we don't really have much tower type uh, characters, but it's really good. She's a powerful unit that buffs allies, alright? And she can summon like an entire army. I'll show you guys later. Keep in mind she's quite expensive, alright? Tower type and she's five costs. In a team that has a lot of defenders and strikers, maybe she can she can be really good. 
I think she's good in raids mostly. So here's the thing. Should you pull for her? No, you should never pull for her because you can actually farm her in the side story. Alright, so please do not waste any tickets on her because you are going to get her from the side story eventually. Similar with Kang So Young. Alright, so that's my advice. But let's say you obtain her, should you build her? Now that's the thing, we're going to talk about her skills. Let's show you guys the stats first. 45,000 HP, 3.4k attack, the rest is pretty subpar. So this is just a basic attack again. Now this passive is really interesting. She doesn't move from the spot where she is deployed. Okay, so similar with Choi Ina in a way. Increase attack of all allies and herself by 10%, which is not bad. At skill level 5 though, alright, the buff is increased to additional 18%. She also grants 20% crit damage. Alright, so if you have Kamizumi ship, perhaps she can further increase the crit damage by a whole. Okay, so this particular skill, 40 seconds, so a jet, this is basically like an air strike. It will summon a jet that basically bombs the entire airfield, deals some decent damage I would say. Obviously at level 5, this will decrease the, the cooldown by further 10 seconds. Alright, and then going into here, 65 seconds for the ultimate skill. So this will summon all the crazy mech units, attack all the enemies, the level will be the same as Maria, but they only have 70% of the stats. So at level 5, the Hound will be replaced by ATL-1 Lincoln and Buzzard by A3 ATF-35 Thunderbolt, which is the Jet. So let me show you guys the skill. That skill is really interesting. I feel like if you have soldier teams, perhaps she could, you know, she could be used in a way, but her cost is really high. I'm not sure if how would you put her in soldier teams, right? So let's summon a bunch of units right here. Okay, so we're gonna summon her right here. Boom. Alright, so that's the skill for the normal skill, right? She just summons a jet. If you guys notice on top of that, there's a jet that moves very fast. Yeah, it does a lot of damage. What makes her cool is the ultimate skill though. Let's have a look at this ultimate skill. Hopefully you guys can see how cool this is. Look at this. She summons all of these units. Remember, all of them will have 70% of their stats, not 100% of their stats, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I think this is a pretty cool skill overall. Like, it summons so many uh, mech units in a way, right? But yeah, I feel like it depends on who you're trying to run or what kind of team you're trying to fit her. She does have this skill. You can only use this once every 65 seconds, okay, which is not too bad. So that's like every 1 minute plus. I don't know man. Maybe you need skill cooldown on her to make this work. And you probably might be struggling with more skill cooldown sets. But I think that's the best way to make her work so that she can spam these two skills more often. So as a tower unit, uh, she's more defensive, right? She doesn't move, she just stays in that spot. I'm not sure how she will fit. In most cases, uh, 5 cost is really really high. Like at 6 cost, you might as well just use an awaken unit. Now if you don't have awaken unit, that's fine, but eventually you will have one. And I'm not sure that she just justifies her high 5 uh, deployment cost, you know, to basically take one Awakened unit spot. That's just what I think. So overall, I would say these two units are skippable. So for Wara and Turnoff, you definitely do not need to pull for her. You can farm for her in the side story. And I would say for the other guy, he looks really cool. But yeah, I think I'm going to skip as well. I'm going to save my tickets for next week. Most likely next week, we're going to have something way cooler than this. Alright, so that's going to be it for the video, guys. Let me know if you guys are going to pull for them. If you guys think that you really want to collect both of them in your collection. As always, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye. <laughs>